Good morning. Still morning. 11.30 a.m. The time I pressed record. Good morning. Hey, listen. Get what is perfect. The authorized version of the scriptures. And please read along with me in the scriptures that we are going to be looking at and considering today. Please. Read along with me. Be a Berean. Search the scriptures daily whether these things be so. Read along with me, because you need to see and hear. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Okay, You need to see and hear what we're going to be talking about today. Okay, Plus, read along with me, because I'm fallible. I make mistakes. Okay, Read along with me. Search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. And hey, listen. Don't trust me. You heard me right. Don't trust what I say. You trust this, the authorized version of the scriptures. You trust this. You can't trust men nowadays. You can't trust women nowadays. You definitely can't trust beasts today, obviously. There's nothing in this world that you can trust. This you can trust. The authorized version of the scriptures. The King James Version. The sword of the spirit. This you can trust. And it is this that speaks of my father. The Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? I beg your pardon. <clears throat> so, with that said, we're going to start in Proverbs 11. Muddled streams, brother. Verses 1 on verse 3 to start. A false balance is abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is his delight. Now, one might look at this verse and say, well, the life in Christ is a balancing act, balancing the good and the evil. No, 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 no. The balance, the scales, okay, a just weight. You know the scales that Lady Liberty here in America is supposed to be carrying in her hands with a sword? She's blind and stuff like that, got the thing on her eyes. It's a weight scale. It's a scale with two scales, okay? A false balance is an abomination to the Lord. What is the scale that you are weighing things upon? Huh? What is the scale? What is, what is the base that you are weighing things upon? But a just weight is his delight. So you see a false balance. The thing that you're actually weighing the things upon, false. But a just weight is his delight. The answer to that question is in context, verse 2. When pride cometh, ye shall be as gods, knowing, knowing good and evil. Ye shall be as gods. You are your own standard. Where does that come from? Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye shall do. He was a murderer from the beginning because he abode not in the truth. And there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. He's the father of lies. Who's that talking about? Obviously, Satan, Lucifer. Lucifer. When pride cometh. When pride cometh. <laughs> Isaiah. 14, verses 13, on to verse 14. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. Where's, who's in heaven? God. Some of you cutie pies, well, which heaven? Shut up. I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. 
mounts of the congregation judging good and evil. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds like some of these people in their arrogance got their heads in the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Who's this talking about? Oh, well, look at verse 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? What, what's the name Lucifer mean? Son of the morning, not morning star. You got a Bible, it might say morning star. Uh, morning star, that's Jesus. Uh, Lucifer is son of the morning. <laughs> Big difference. How art thou cast down, cut, cut, excuse me, down to the ground, which did this weaken the nations. When pride cometh, then cometh shame. But with the lowly is wisdom, fear of the Lord. Now look at that verse. Someone who is lost and in their pride, and we're gonna we're gonna go over scriptures about this. They they have no shame. They might have shame to an extent, but they justify themselves in their evil in their sin. So the question is, when pride cometh, any saint can have, can dabble with pride. Absolutely. Why? Because pride is a sin. And where is sin relegated to? The sagging sin suit. We've addressed this on, uh, on many occasions. Judge not uh, comes to mind. And also... Uh, the love of the skin suit, okay? Which set off a lot of devils because it exposed them for their love of flesh, okay? All right? But when pride cometh, you know, every one of us saints can have issues with pride. Paul, who was broken of his self-righteousness, a saint, amen? Paul had a pride problem. You read Acts 21 sometimes. We address that in Monday's video, okay? Paul had a pride problem. When pride cometh, then cometh shame. But with the lowly is wisdom. Do you think Paul had a little shame involved that, you know, that he's like, hey, shouldn't have listened to the Lord? Or, excuse me, I should have listened to the Lord? Excuse me, excuse me, <laughs> I misspoke there. Okay? The Lord didn't want Paul to go to Jerusalem, but he went anyway. Do you think there was a little shame there somewhere in him on that? What was, what was the balance? See, people will say to you that Christianity is a balancing act. Christianity is not the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. Okay? But the balance that we are to weigh things on... It's the one thing you can trust, the authorized version of the scriptures. This is a just weight. What is the balance that you are trying to put the just weight upon? That's the question. And it's answered, when pride cometh, then cometh shame. But with the lowly is wisdom. The integrity of the upright shall guide them. But the perverseness of transgressors shall destroy them. Not right away, but inevitably, eventually. That's why, you know, this is their hour in the power of darkness. That's why they're so adamant. That's why they're coming out of the woodwork. Yesterday, and communication had been had. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, by the way. You know who you are. You're, you're going to see this. <laughs> Thank you. Yesterday, I saw a video. Well, I, I saw it, but it was one of those streamed videos, so there's really nothing to see. So I was listening to it. And I, I'm going to keep people names out of this for, for certain reasons. But um, an individual was being exposed. Uh, for the horrific devil that he is, a, of course, free grace adherent. And the video, which clearly exposed the guy as a lost devil, which free grace adherents are, 
Okay, we're going to talk more about that in a little bit. But the video. Now, the individual, like I say, I, I'm keeping people's names out of this for their sake. Okay, but the individual who did this video were, uh, did this video to expose this other individual. I get that. However, um, and this, I, I don't put any fault, of course, but the, the video was giving evidence of this one individual who, who just believed and received. He calls himself a Christian. He thinks he's saved, deceiving and being deceived. You know, one of these disgusting, um, reprehensible, repugnant, free grace adherents. Okay, especially these guys who teach this nonsense. This Roman Catholic nonsense, we'll talk about that in a minute, um, just a stream of profanity. I, and I mean, and not just like, you know, s certain people, you know, of these Christians will drop these words and say, just a, a never ending stream of filth. Um, Saying things like, uh, glad that people's children were dead and that, uh, uh cursing all the way, uh, hoping that, uh, people were killed. I mean, and, and the profanity was just prolific. I, I, and I, as I told him, it's like, I, dude, I, I couldn't even go, I couldn't make it through the whole thing. The profan now, it was done to expose, it's like, hey, you need to stay away from this dude. This dude's evil, okay? And he has proved his point that, that the guy's lost, okay? But it was like the profanity. Uh, profanity, guys, was just... Uh, it, it was full of wonder. It, it took my breath away. And, and that is a symptom. That is a symptom of a false balance. Why? Because easy believism is a Roman Catholic doctrine, an ecumenical Roman Catholic doctrine, where the individual saves themselves by their own belief, and the faith is in their faith, in their actual faith. Within the pages of this, the Roman Catholic Catechism, within the beginnings of, we're not going to look at that today, but within the beginnings of the Roman Catholic Catechism, in this very catechism, it has talked about man attaining to godhood. Godhood. Oh, you don't believe me, huh? Check it out for yourself. You know, a majority of the Catholics don't even know what their own catechism says. Talk about ignorance. Okay? Talk about ignorance. Okay? Nine out of ten Catholics don't even know what their own catechism teaches. They don't. Okay? Okay? But see, the false balance, ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil, ye shall be like the Most High. And you judge what? A false balance is an abomination to the Lord. The balance itself that you are put, trying to put a just weight upon is false. It stems from pride. But see, when pride cometh, then cometh shame. See, when we saints... Dabble in shame, uh, dabble in pride. Shame comes because we are, when you're being in pride, who are you trying to exalt yourself over? Come on. But see, when someone who is not saved, the shame is imputed to them without them even knowing it. Why? Because the balance itself is false. But with the lowly is wisdom. And being lowly ought to lead into humility, being humble. God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the lowly. But in Peter, he says, God resisteth the proud, or, or James, one of the two, where he says, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. People will point out, well, that's a contradiction. No, it's not. If you're lowly, you ought to have humility. It's not a contradiction. Okay? All right? So the false balance. And like I said, this video, which I couldn't even make it through the whole thing. 
And like I said, it was a streamed video. There was no visual stimuli. But what I heard, and this this guy, <laughs> take my breath away. But see, this is what these people do. Shame is imputed upon them because they are trying. They are claiming to represent the true Christ, and they're not. Their Christ is one in three persons. The Christ who is, is one God comprised of spirit, soul, and body. Okay, sleazy believism, antinomianism, free grace has the wrong God. Okay? Hey! All right, you're, you believe in free grace? Again, I'll give you $2,000, money I don't have. You, you, you show me. Verbatim, free grace in the authorized version of the scriptures. It's not there. Your grace. You know what the, these guys want to offer you freedom from? God. They do. They offer you a freedom from God. Because these guys can just profanity. And, they, and see, these guys... These guys in Proverbs 14, when you, when you, and I've seen it, I've seen it with these people. They go, they do this. Proverbs 14, 9 and 10. Fools make a mock at sin, but among the righteous there is favor. The heart knoweth his own bitterness, and a stranger doth not intermittle with his joy. Bitterness. In bitterness, these people swear, curse, wish people dead. Wish that God kills them. Okay? Look, my the one guy I hate other than myself, okay, if he dies, he's going to hell. And you know who you are, by the way, you bloke. Okay? But if he dies, he's going to hell. I'd like to see him get saved. I don't think he can. The Lord can save him, but he has gone far, far away that he's, he's a lost cause. But if he dies, he's going to hell. Okay? And that's when you say, praise the Lord for his righteous judgment. You know, I don't want him, you know, don't wish him death. Okay, why? Because he's going to hell. He's my, he's the, that man, and you know who you are, you see this, that is the only man other than myself that I hate. That one man. Is the only other man besides myself that I hate. I hate that man. And I have, and oh, I, I don't despise you. I hate you with perfect hatred. You are the enemy of our Lord. But see, I don't want you to die because you die, you go to hell. The guy who was being exposed was wishing people dead and cursing all along the way. And, make, and see, when you confront these guys about that, it's like, well, it's not gonna affect, you know, it's not gonna affect my salvation. It's like that idiot Tom guy said, uh, called holiness quote, holiness garbage. That gar uh, to be holy, separate, other than is garbage. To that Tom guy, okay. The heart knoweth his own bitterness, and a stranger. Who's a stranger to these guys who make a mock at sin? The actual Lord Jesus Christ. You go to these guys, it's like, you know, you're claiming to be a representative of Christ, and yet profanity just... And, and see, here's a, another thing. Okay, here's another thing. Um, these people who also claim to be King James only, but yet publicly post things with profanity on it, they're, they're not, they, they do not truly believe in the authorized version of the Scriptures. Oh, they say they will, so does Stephen Anderson, but he's lost, okay? But see, when someone claims to be King James only, and yet posts, posts something with profanity in it, what is the thing that they're giving off onto you who sees that? That God's okay with that. No, he isn't. No, he isn't. And see, these people who make a mock at sin, it's like, well, hey, I just believe. I'm saved by my own belief. Okay, by God's grace. The more I sin, more grace I have. Who are you to judge me? I, 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 I judge myself. I have a perfect standard. I judge myself. I can judge you. We're supposed to judge. 
and yet they're okay with profanity. Here's the crutch that these people will use. Here's the crutch. I've told this story before. When I lived over in Ma on Madison Street many years ago, I was moving my couch around and I dropped my couch on my toe. Okay? Upon doing such, in the heat of the moment, I uttered a profanity so loud that it could be heard near the bridges of Madison County. Okay? I, I did. I dropped the couch on my toe. I uttered a profanity so loud that you could hear it in Wisconsin. Okay? And uh, bl blood all over the place, bleeding like a stuck pig. I hobble into the bathroom, and I, it hurt. But you know what hurt worse? That the Lord heard me utter a profanity. Loudly enough, so others, he who is in reputation for wisdom and honor, a little folly, that's an Ecclesiastes. Someone help me out in the description box with that, please. Or in the comment section with that. But, okay, someone who is in reputation for wisdom and honor, a little folly, dropping a couch on my toe and uttering a loud profanity that even neighbors is like, hey, Brad, you okay? I heard you. Um, yeah, yeah. I had reason. But that was no excuse. You see? And like, like the one brother who got his arm cut with, with the plywood, and he's like, ah, uttered a profanity. The one sister who was walking down the stairs, and have you ever missed a step walking down a flight of stairs? You ever done that? You miss a step? And what happens? You're like, you miss a step, and woo, you, you fall, and in that moment, she uttered a profanity. Okay? Yeah, besides, when you miss a step going down a flight of stairs, you kind of feel stupid. <laughs> See this? <laughs> okay, you do? All right, I, I, I sympathize. Okay, but what happens in that heat of the moment? A profanity. Cut his arm. Fell down the stairs. They were hurt more that they uttered a profanity. Like the one brother. Uh, the, the, the one, uh, whatever it was, jumped the median. And, uh, and a head-on collision was just about to happen. And the dude saw it. And he was like, oh, oh profanity. And bam, the uh, airbag goes off and stuff like that. Okay? Those are reasons. But those aren't excuses for us to speak like the world. That happens. Okay? But see, a saint... And everyone that I've mentioned, when that incident, after the fact, were more hurt by the fact that they uttered a profanity rather than the injury itself. And my sister falls down the stairs, you know, bashed her favorite head on the stairs. She felt like she felt stupid, but she was more offended, not in the fact that she was hurt, but that she spake a profanity in the heat of the moment. That happens. Unless you're Smiley Dave. You know, from Chick Publications, who apparently, uh, this is only apparently, I can't verify this, but apparently he has been made aware of things I have said about him, you know, like, and apparently he didn't, I, that's only apparently, I can't just, I can't validate that or whatever, but apparently Mr. Smiley Dave is aware of some of the things that I have said of him. <laughs> okay. Uh, you, 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 you got no, you know, when, when someone is nice 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and only shows any fire to actual brethren who have legitimate questions for him, that, that makes guy wonder. But anyway, anyway, these guys, these people, and I point to free grace because these guys will justify it without any shame. And see, what they're giving you to believe is that with these guys who, without any reservation, without any hesitation, hey, they're bloke! You know, you, you, I mean, how you're be able to fool people is beyond me. Uh, that's because you're counting on people's a lack of memory of the past, which you like to bring up. 
You put something in that post of yours. I was made aware of this by someone else, by the way, where you said like you did a couple years ago, uh, you put a profanity up there and you've posted it. So what I'm, this is what I'm talking about. These people have no shame. They make a mock at sin. Okay? They make a mock at sin. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, which that Tom guy... <laughs> okay, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 12 on to verse 13. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Godly. The Lord's example of holiness being separate than that. Other than that. And the free gracer integrates with that and justifies it by, I'm saved because I just believe. And the more I sin, the more grace abounds. I can sin because I'm not under the law, but under grace. It doesn't matter. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Does it affect the Lord's salvation if you are a saint and you curse? No, because it's not your salvation. But see the way. The way you serve your God reflects him. And these antinomianists, which is a daughter of the whore, Rome, these people who do this, okay, they are giving you an example that their God, which is always, I have yet to meet one, the antinomianist free gracer is always, I have yet to meet one, is always believes in one God and three persons. That's the wrong God. That's the wrong God. Okay? They give you to believe that God is okay with you every once in a while because, hey, you got to be like the world to win the world. They give you to believe that their little God is okay with profanity. And the crutch they use, it's like, well, you know, you smell. Hey, any of you mechanics wrenching, and I'm not, wrenching on your car, and you skim your thumb, your knuckle on your thumb, with your socket wrench, done that, and the heat of the moment, it's like, ah, ah. Some do, some don't. You know, Smiley Dave, he could probably smack his hand with a hammer 20 times and not do anything, unless a brother questions him. I definitely leave that alone, okay? All right? They're giving you to believe that God is okay with filth. He's not. These people don't know who God is. Now see, here's the thing about sleazy believism. Unlike King James Bible believing Christianity, and they do it by the way, I hope you're proud of yourselves because you have now made King James Bible believing Christianity just a mere denomination within this vomitous thing called Christianity. I hope you're proud of yourselves with your little cultic followers. Bravo! Count your red pennies and your cars and have a great life, pal. You've made something another denomination. You've made yourself of the number, pal. Bravo! Good for you. I hope you're happy. I hope you're I hope you're happy. Okay, you've succeeded. You've made King James Bible believing Christianity a denomination. Good for you. Good for you. Count your pennies and cars, pal, and enjoy your life. I, I mean that. Have your best life, pal. Anyway, I'm a little heated as you as if you cannot tell. I don't care. I don't got time I have much time left. I ain't holding back. Free grace is not like King James Bible believing Christianity, Christianity, meaning it is not another denomination. But as the Jesuit is, it infiltrates within these denominations. Okay, it's an infection. That's why I want, I'm not a Christian. I'm not a Christian. I want nothing to do with that filth called Christianity. You want to be involved in that That your problem. That is your problem. Okay? But see, free grace, like a Jesuit, is an infiltrator and infiltrates these disgusting denominations. And what's the bridge? 
See, like I said, in uh, Vatican II, Rome considers the Lutheran, and they're just German Catholics, the Lutheran, the Episcopalian, the Presbyterian, the Southern Baptist, the Pentecostal, uh, uh, the Methodist, I already said that, and whatever denomination, King James Bible, even Christianity, okay, even Calvinism, I would reckon. They, and, and that's in Vatican Council too, we're not going to look at that today, Rome calls them separated brethren. Separated brethren. And what's the bridge to inevitably bring everyone back together under the headship of Rome to inevitably be under the headship of that man of sin, the son of perdition, during the time of Jacob's trouble, who will be Satan? Hmm? What's the bridge? Hmm? Ecumenicalism. That's the bridge. How does Rome e implement ecumenicalism in one of her most dangerous daughters? Think about this. Just believe and receive. And this is truth. Anyone can believe. Huh? Huh? Anyone can believe. James chapter 2. James chapter 2, verse 19. Thou believest that there is one God. Well, okay, right there. What one God are you talking about? One God of three persons? Or one God comprised of spirit, soul, and body? See, the three persons, <laughs> one God is not the true God. That's the wrong God. God who is spirit, soul, and body, whose image we are made in, that's the real God. But, okay, thou believest that there is one God. Thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. Stop. The devils also believe and tremble. Anyone can believe. Think about this, guys. How is Satan, through ecumenicalism, and free grace is an ecumenical doctrine created by Rome. You Jesuit coadjutors, you're working for the Vatican, you scoundrel devils. How do they do it? Anyone can believe. Anyone can believe. Free grace is Trinitarian, too. I have not met one person who claims to be an adherent of free grace who believes in the true scriptural Godhead, one God comprised of spirit, soul, and body. I have not met one. I have not met one. Okay? And I am persuaded that someone who believes in the actual God of the scriptures is not going to be involved with free grace. It's of the devil. But anyone can believe. What's the basis for the free grace? Do you believe in Jesus? That's why they skip over repentance, because to them, repentance is a work. Repentance is going from unbelief to belief. Uh, uh, what is that? Thou doest well, the devils also believe and tremble. You should see the gymnastics that these guys try to do to get past that one. It's pretty, it's uh, full of wonder. It's, uh, it's amusing, it's entertaining. But anyone can believe. And they'll have, well, they have to believe that Jesus died for their sins. But see, here's the thing. Here's the thing. It is documentable and provable historically that there was a man. And this is provable historically. You can document him. This is documented. It, it, it is proof. There is proof out there to be found that Jesus of Nazareth was an actual person. Very. I've met some atheists who like to say, well, I don't believe Jesus even existed. Uh, that, that could be proved that Jesus of Nazareth actually existed. Okay? It can be proved historically that Jesus of Nazareth was crucified on a cross. The, the, the documentation for that can be found. I have, you know, most, most atheists that I have encountered don't dispute that. That, yes, Jesus of Nazareth was a real man. Yes, he died on a cross. Was he God the Father? 
And see, the free gracer to deceive people, most people, most people will not, not all, but most people you are going to encounter will not deny the historicity and the fact that there was a man named Jesus of Nazareth. There was a man named Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified on a cross. Okay, most, not all, most people will not ref, uh, uh, dispute that. Here comes the free gracer. Do you believe in Jesus? Well, he was an actual guy. You know he died on the cross for you? Well, he was crucified. You believe in Jesus? Well, yeah. You're saved! That's how it works. Well, you look at that, that little punk. That, that, that weird, devil-possessed... Uh, God, uh, need God kid, okay? That's basically what he did. Basically, he didn't use one like a scripture, but that's, that's basically the approach that that kid took, you know? And the one doofus young man, you know, most people are not going to dispute that Jesus of Nazareth was an actual person. Most people are not. Most people are not going to dispute that Jesus of Nazareth was crucified. But see, just like the free gracer who leaves out repentance, hey, that's a work to them. Praying is a work to them. Calling on the name of the Lord is a work to them. Just believe and receive and make false converts. They come in. Anyone can believe. The devils can believe. Anyone can believe. So, with that rationale, how is Satan going to bring everyone under the headship of Rome? What's the bridge? Anyone can believe. You know, Muslims believe in Jesus? They even confess that he was crucified. Uh, now, they don't believe he was the Son of God, Son of God, meaning they reject the Trinity. They also don't believe he's God. But, but, but! They believe in Jesus. And we're, we're going to look at this here too in a second. I've met Buddhists who believe in Jesus. Jesus was an historic, actual person. Jesus was, actually died and was crucified on the cross. And see, just like the easy believers, it's what they leave out that is dangerous to you. So with that Roman Catholic theology of free grace. So that means that, hey, they believe in Jesus. Hey, Jesus was crucified on the cross. Do you believe that? Well, well, yeah. That, I mean, that's... You're saved! That's how they do it. And see, it's what they leave out. Have any of you actually spake with a Hinduist you know, the ones who have the red dot. Don't be a jerk and don't do that. But you know, they have the red dot there signifying the third eye. Have you ever talked with a Hinduist before? What they actually believe? Hinduism is very confusing, by the way. They're, they're, they're animals and stuff like that. The, the Brahma bull thing and what, whatever. But have you ever actually took time to speak with an, a devout Hinduist? You know that they believe in Jesus? They also believe that he died for sins? Huh? Do you, you know that? You know that? Do you know some Hindus will actually quote Jesus? You know that? Same with Buddhists. Same with Taoists and Shintoists. Because ecumenicalism, there are many paths to God. Reading to you from the Roman Catholic Catechism. All right. Uh, this is what we are going to be. I'm going. You, you need to hear this. Free grace is an ecumenical weapon created by the Roman Catholic Church. Free grace is a Roman Catholic doctrine, even though Rome herself does not preach that doctrine. It was created by Rome, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. You're a free gracer. Hey, guess what? You adhere to Roman Catholic doctrine. It's an ecumenical weapon to bridge all these faiths 
together to inevitably come under the headship of Rome during the time of Jacob's trouble under the headship of that man of sin, the son of perdition, who will be Satan. Prove it to you. Well, in the description box, the playlist for refuting uh, free grace will be there. Uh, scripturally, free grace has been uh, destroyed. It has been. But let me show you this. Now, we're going to be reading where my finger starts all this on this page. Okay? Where my finger starts. And then we're going to end right here where it's like, look at that! Can you see that? Can you, can you see that, what that says? Outside the church, they mean the building in Rome, there is no salvation. Anyone can believe. You know, you free gracers, the Lord rebuked you, and I hope the Lord shuts you up. I hope the Lord shuts you up. But this is your hour in the power of darkness, and people don't want the truth. Now, the church and non-Christians. Those who have not yet received the gospel are related to the people of God in various ways. The relationship of the church with the Jewish people and the Hebraic Jews that I know of uh, would hotly detest, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, dispute this. When she delves into her own mystery, the church, the people of God in the New Covenant, the Covenant and Testament, covenant, there is a big difference between Covenant and Testament. Again, that will be in the description box for you. Discovers her link with the Jewish people. The first to hear the word of God, and they capitalize this. Okay? The Jewish faith, unlike other non-Christian -Christian religions, is already a response to God's revelation in the Old Covenant. The Jews belong to the sonship, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. They're trying to quote Romans 3, verse 1. Okay? To them belong the patriarchs. And of their race, according to the flesh, is the Christ. For the gifts and calling of God are irrevocable. And I right here, they're trying to quote out of Romans 11. Of course, they don't have the true word of God. <laughs> uh, without repentance, okay? Can't be repented of. The Jew is the apple of God's eye. And when one considers the future. Now see, the Hebraic Jews of today are stuck in the Old Testament. They rejected their Mashiach. And you look into the Noahide laws, trying to um, get people to make the Messiah come because the, uh, of justifying certain things and like that, whatever, okay? And when one considers the future, God's people of the Old Covenant and the new people of God tend towards similar goals. I beg to differ. Okay, I beg to differ. The Hebraic Jew of today, to them, their, their Messiah has not come. The Messiah has come. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay? Jesus is the fulfillment of the Old Testament. Okay? Let's continue. Expectation of the coming or the return of the Messiah. But one awaits the return of the Messiah who died and rose from the dead and is recognized as Lord and Son of God. And of course, Trinitarians. The other awaits the coming of a Messiah whose features remain hidden till the end time. Going forth conquering and to conquer that man of sin, the son of perdition. That's who... The, that's who Satan is going to deceive the Hebraic Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble because he's going to come as a Jew proclaiming to be their Messiah. When he goes into the third, uh, this is what I believe, that when he goes into the uh, third temple, third rebuilt temple, and he's going to proclaim, I am. And he's going to start calling everyone Christians. Okay? The other awaits the coming of a Messiah whose features remain hidden till the end of time, and the latter waiting is accompanied by the drama of not knowing or misunderstanding Christ Jesus. 
The church's relationship with the Muslim, the plan of salvation also includes those who acknowledge the Creator in the first place among whom are the Muslims. And hey, you Islamic people, you Muslims, uh, Rome created your religion. Okay? These profess to hold to the faith of Abraham. If they did, they would be saints. Okay? Okay? Uh, they, they hold to the faith of Abraham, they say. And they, you know, well, Ishmael was the firstborn. Okay? But it is in Isaac. Your seed shall be called. His seed shall be called. Okay? Okay? You the thing about the Muslims. You gotta watch out for that. And together with us, they adore the one merciful God, mankind's judge on the last day. Now, let's read this again. The church's relationship with the Muslims. The plan of salvation also includes those who acknowledge the, the Creator. You believe in Jesus? Huh? Muslims believe in Jesus. They even believe that he was crucified. They don't believe he was the Son of God. They don't believe in the Trinity, obviously. But they, then again, they don't believe that Jesus is God the Father. Okay? But in the first place, in the first place, meaning there are others out there. Amongst whom are the Muslims? They profess to hold the faith of Abraham. And together with us, they adore the one merciful God. Buddhists also will claim to adore the one merciful God. Taoists, Shintoists, Hinduists. Try to talk to a Hindu sometime about what they believe. Fascinating, fascinating conversation you ought to have. Anyway, but they believe in one merciful God? Anyone can believe. Mankind's judge on the last day. The church's bond with non-Christian religions is in the first place the common origin and end of the human race. All na And right here I have one world government written. All nations form but one community. No, they don't. No, they don't. You read about that in Scripture. God's like, okay, I want you guys over there. I want you guys over there. I want you over there. I want you over there. Rome's the one that calls everyone together to make a tower. Okay? God is a God of variety. God is a God of distinction. There's nothing wrong. Hey, even the black Hebrew Israelites get that one right. Okay, and they're, they're, they're lost anyway. But God's a God of variety. God's a God of distinction. God loves variety. Or else we'd all have a chihuahua. Or else you'd all look like me. God forbid. Or all, we all look like you. There'd be only one type of horse. There'd be only, God's a God of variety, okay? God is a God of distinction, okay? We're all mankind, but God is a God of distinction. You over there, you over there, you over there, you over there, and that's beautiful. That's the way God designed it. But Satan, yeah, if God said, let's all get together, make ourselves a tower, and we shall be as gods. All nations form but one community. This is so because all stem from the one stock which God created to people the entire earth. And yes, we all have a common ancestor, Adam and Eve. And also because all share a common destiny, namely God. No. No. God will have all men to be saved. But see... Not everyone's going to be saved. Okay? Not everyone's going to be saved, dear people. Not everyone's going to be saved. Okay? God is not a God of coercion. God doesn't force you to be saved or to be lost. Okay? Everyone's destiny is to appear before God. Saints, we appear at the judgment seat of Christ. Everyone else at the great white throne. Okay? That's true. That's true. Yes. Everyone's going to give an account of himself to God, but not everyone's going to be saved. Let's continue. 
His providence, evident goodness, and saving designs extend to all against the day when the elect are gathered together in the holy city. Translation. When that man of sin, the son of perdition, walks into the uh, third rebuilt temple, proclaiming and having the visage of the Roman Catholic Jesus, I am. The Catholic Church, get a, little, get, get a little of this. The Catholic Church recognizes in other religions that search among shadows and images. <laughs> Funny they should make mention shadows and images. Because that's where the Jesuits uh, uh, breed and abound. For the God who is unknown yet near since, yet near since, he gives life and breath and all things and wants all men to be saved. That's true. You're alive. You have breath in you. God allowed it. God will have all men to be saved. Yes, that is true. Thus, the church, Rome, ecumenicalism, Vatican II, considers all goodness and truth found in these religions as a preparation for the gospel and given by him who enlightens all men that they may at length have life. Here, here look, where, where, where my finger is here. Okay, read that. Look at it. Pause it. Read it. Rome has for a long time been ecumenical uh, since Vatican II, of course, uh, but have been like there are many paths to God. And they all lead to one God, which they claim to uh, be uh, representatives of one God and three persons. That's not the real God. But yet, see, are you seeing the bridge, how they do this? Everyone, anyone can believe. And when you, hey, you believe in Jesus? Well, he was a real person. You, you believe he died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scripture? No. I do you believe he died on a cross? Well, yeah. You're saved! That's how you devils do it. And Rome is your mother! That's why I mentioned to the one... Uh, uh, Canadian talk show house when I asked him, how's your mother? How's your mother, man? Talking, you know, Rome. Okay? In their religious behavior, however, men also display the limits and errors that disfigure the image of God in them. <laughs> that's, that's, that's actually a true statement, especially with the free gracers who justify sin. Very often deceived by the evil one, Men have become vain in their reasonings and have exchanged the truth of God for a lie and served the creature rather than the creator. Or else living and dying in this world without God, they are exposed to ultimate despair. One world religion here. To re reunite all his children, scattered and led astray by sin, the Father willed to call the whole of humanity together into his son's church, the Roman Catholic Church. So in one breath, they're saying there are many paths to God, but all paths lead to the Roman Catholic Church. How do they bridge it? Anyone can believe. Thou believest that there is one God. Thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. That's the bridge. Anyone can believe. Free grace is nothing more than a Roman Catholic creation of ecumenicalism. And it infects other religions. And according to their own doctrine. Uh, I guess Buddhists are safe. They believe in they believe in Jesus. <clears throat> Muslims, well, well, then again, you can argue with the Muslim because they're against the Trinity. Good for them. Good for them. But they don't believe Jesus is God the Father. Okay, they don't believe that. Okay, so eh, okay. But hey, remember, it's what these guys leave out. 
Uh, Elmer from New York called the Romans Road of Salvation the Romans Road to Hell. Okay? And the antinomianist free grace devil hates Romans 3, 10 on verse 18. You know why they hate that and avoid it? Because it does this. It, point, it puts the finger on that one thing you lack. You lack personal accountability, which they avoid. The church is the place where humanity must rediscover its unity and salvation. Which, of course, bleeds into outside the church, there is no salvation. Meaning, the only way to be saved is to become a Roman Catholic. The church is the world reconciled. And see, after we, the body of Christ, are gone... These guys, these free grace devils who are of Roman Catholicism are going to be left behind. Hey, just believe and receive. Just, hey, hey, we all believe in one God. We all believe in Jesus. Yeah, he actually lived. He actually died on the cross. Yeah. And then that man of sin is revealed after we are gone. And I'm telling you people who get left behind, you mark these words. He's going to look just like the Roman Catholic Jesus in his visage. You mark my words. You mark my words. You mark them words, dude. That man of sin, the son of perdition, number one, he's going to be a Hebrew. Number two, he's going to look the visage, face. He's going to look like the Roman Catholic Jesus. You mark my words. You mark my words. You'll see when you're left behind. She is the bark which in the full sail of the Lord's cross by the breath of the Holy Spirit navigates safely in the world. And one of the uh, questions that fellow Jesuits are supposed to ask one another, how dost thou travel? And the one will to decipher if they're actually a Jesuit. And the one other Jesuit is supposed to answer, by the sacred bark of Peter. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that's in the, um, the extreme oath. But I think, or, 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 also, or also in the Secreta Monita, but that's one of the things, when a Jesuit is like, are you really a Jesuit? Yeah, one of, the, one of them is like, and they do all this symbolism, like doing crosses on their wrists, and doing all these mannerism kind of things, kind of like the Freemasons, okay? Okay, and remember, Freemasonry is controlled by the Jesuits, not vice versa, Okay? <clears throat> But one of the questions that Jesuits will ask each other, how dost thou travel? By the sacred bark of Peter. That's almost verbatim, as, as, as I have read it. Very interesting wording that they, that they have here in their little Bible. Okay? According to another image dear to the church, fathers to the... Wait. According to another image dear to the church... And, and where, where was that... Where they mention in their verse 843 here, uh, the Catholic Church recognizes in other religions that search among shadows and images. And then just right there in their verse 845, according to another image dear to the church fathers, she is prefigured by Noah's Ark, which alone saves from the flood. <laughs> And of course, like I say, we're not going to read that. Outside the church, there is no salvation yet. According to Rome, you've got to be a Roman Catholic to be saved, maybe. Uh, look, people. Free grace is the bridge. The ecumenical doctrine created by Rome, free grace is the bridge to bring everyone under the headship of Rome after we, the body of Christ, is gone. Hey, all you. I, I, I don't care who you are, free gracer. You're a servant of the Vatican. You're a servant of Rome. And your doctrine that you're preaching, you don't preach the real Jesus. You don't have the real gospel. Uh, you are preaching Roman Catholicism, ecumenicalism. Anyone can believe. That's how they do it. And it's what they leave out. And see, because they leave these things out and they give an example of their God, Satan, uh, Jeremiah 8, <clears throat> Jeremiah 8, verses 4 on to verse 11. 
Moreover, thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord, They shall fall and not arise. Shall he turn away and not return? Why then is this people of Jerusalem slidden back by a perpetual backsliding? They hold fast deceit. They refuse to return. Along comes a guy saying, hey, just believe and receive, and that's it. You don't have to, you know, there's no change involved because you're not made a new creature, because you're not given the true gospel or the true Christ. So, yeah, you don't have to worry about anything. You can just go on living and, hey, you, you just have faith in your faith. They don't usually say that, but your faith is in your faith. You save yourself. Go on, go on. I hearkened and heard. But they spake not aright. No man repented him of the of his wickedness, saying, What have I done? Th th these guys with their profanity, dude. And post posts calling themselves Christians that have profanity in them and leaving them up there. And then posting video. And see, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Okay. When you're doing a live stream, these guys, when they go off on their tirades of profanity, when you see it live in the moment, that's one thing. But see, you don't have to upload it. You don't have to post it. They make the conscience, conscious decision to post that which has profanity in it. Therefore, they are knowingly doing contrary to what our Lord would have done. Like when you see one of these live stream idiots, and not everyone who does a live stream is an idiot. Okay, I'm not saying that. But the free grace guys, okay, when they do their live streams, and like that one dude guy who just is prolific, you know, uh, you know, you you people think that guy's saved. I I, I pity you. Uh, you 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 got rocks in your head. But I mean, when like guys like that go off on their tirades of profanity, when it's happening live, okay, it's like ah, ah turn. Go away from that. Don't listen to it. But see, after a live stream, uh, you do have the option of either not uploading it or leaving it be. Leaving it be or uploading it. They make the conscious decision to upload it, knowing that they have that profanity in there. So when you post something on your little channel that has profanity on it, and, and of course you boast about it, right? And you have a reason and you make excuses. And as we saw on Monday, um, when it comes to excuses, Scripture does not paint excuses in a positive light. Okay, watch the video about that. Well, what about if my car, we addressed that in the video on Monday. Okay, we're not going to get off on that. Let's continue here. Everyone turned to his course as the horse rusheth into the battle. And our Lord tells us, not to be as the horse who needs their mouth hit, uh, uh, bridled with bit and bridle. Yea, the stork in the heaven knoweth her appointed times. And the turtle and the crane and the swallow observe the time of their coming. But my people know not the judgment of the Lord. They don't want to know the truth. They want their cake and eat it too. Isaiah chapter 1. Verses 3 on to verse 4. <laughs> oh no, 2 on to verse 4. Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth. For the Lord has spoken. I have nursed and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. The ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's crib. When animals know better than you free gracers do, when the Lord is saying, the ox knoweth his owner and the ass his master's crib. When God is comparing animals in a better light than his servants, that that will scare the hell out of you. That will scare the hell out of you. But then again, fear the Lord is work to these guys. <laughs> but Israel doth not know, my people doth not consider. Ah, sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity. Like I said, that, that video I tried to listen to yesterday, I couldn't make it. That guy who was being exposed, nothing but a string of profanity, wishing people dead. 
I, I like I told him, it was like I, I couldn't even listen to it, man. It was it was so grotesque. It was so good. I mean, it's like you you did what you needed to do. I, I I personally I wouldn't have done it that way, but hey, you you exposed the guy. Everyone was aware, okay? That profanity, okay? All right, but. And a sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors. They have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. They are gone away backward. Isaiah chapter 3. Isaiah chapter 3, verses 9 unto verse 11. The shoe of their countenance visages the face. Countenance, body language. Okay? All right? I know, brother, countenance is a little bit deeper than that. Simplifying it, your body language. Okay? The shoe of your countenance. The shoe of their countenance doth witness against them. And the crutch these guys go to is like, well, you, you, you curse. Yeah, but you know what? I am greatly offended that my father heard that profanity come out of my lips. You guys justify it. It's like, hey, his grace covers it all. The more I sin, the more grace I have. We're not under the law, but under grace. I could be just like a devil. And you know what? All things are lawful for you. See, that's how some of these King James Bible-believing Christians justify yoking themselves up with Rome on December 25th. Yeah, and no shame. Because, hey, all things are lawful for you. But not all things are expedient. But see, that's the crush, crutch they hold to. But see, a saint. I, I, I was in my bathroom. Blood all over the floor. I was in tears. Not because it hurt me. That hurt. My father heard what I said. And I said it so loudly that even the old man next door said, like, Hey, Brad, you okay? I heard you... you And see, these guys, you know, you post your little post there uh, and you're yelling at people and use profanity and leave it up and justify it, right? See, these people are not representing the true God because the true God of the scriptures is not okay with that. But see, these guys tell you by their behavior that it's okay. The shoe of their countenance doth witness against them. And they declare their sin as Sodom. They hide it not. Okay, a live stream, these guys curse and swear, but they decide to upload it, knowing that that's in there. You put up a post that has profanity in it. They declare their sin as Sodom. They hide it not. Woe unto their soul. For they have rewarded evil unto themselves. Say ye to the righteous that it shall be well with him. For they shall eat the fruit of their doings. Woe unto the wicked. It shall be ill with him. For the reward of his hand shall be given him. Hey, this is your best life now, pal. Right? And of course, of course, where it says woe unto their soul. Isaiah 5, 20 unto 23. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil. Think about that. These guys, these Roman Catholic free gracers, they're all Roman Catholic. It's ecumenicalism. It's the bridge that is going to be used to uh, link all faiths together, faiths together to be under the headship of Rome. Okay? That's the bridge. Anyone. Hey, the devils believe. Anyone can believe. And it's what they leave out. Okay? One to them that call evil good and good evil. These guys call the actual gospel the true Lord Jesus Christ. One God comprised the spirit, soul, and body. They call that heresy. Wonder why? Because they're Catholics. That put darkness for light and light for darkness. That put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Yeah, and the things they do, it's a shame to mention the things that they do in the darkness. They won't go to the light because the light exposes their deeds. That's why they hate the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. Okay? 
Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. I'm saved because I just believe. And see, easy believism is not a denomination like King James Bible believing Christianity is. It's an infection like the Jesuit order, a small people. Like in Daniel, it mentions how he becomes great with a small people. The Jesuits in number of the totality of Christianity is small, but that small number of Jesuits have come in and infected just like easy believism it has it's a cancer it's a disease that has infiltrated and christianity is not the true faith that was once delivered onto the saints anyway but it has infiltrated and infected all these denominations okay just believe and receive okay not all not all but ultimately it's the bridge that will ultimately, you guys will get left behind, you'll see. It's the bridge that ultimately will yoke everyone together, just like in the book of Gen Genesis, everyone getting together and building themselves a tower that reaches on to heaven to make a name for themselves. Woe unto them that are mighty to drink wine, and men of strength to mingle strong drink. You read in Revelation uh, chapter 17, the wine of Rome, which justify the wicked for reward. I remember people um, a while ago justifying Martin Richling, you know, the Canadian talk show's host's teacher. <laughs> okay? But uh, these guys, these free gracers, justify wickedness. License to sin. That's all they do. Uh, the more they sin, the more God's grace abounds. Hey, the more you sin, the better it is for you. That's their mentality. Okay? Uh, we're not under the law. We're under grace. They're not, they're not even, they don't even believe that they're bound to the morality of the law. And take away the righteousness of the righteous from him. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Luke 16, 15. Luke 16, 15. And remember, to these guys, calling on the name of the Lord is a work. Prayer is a work. Repentance is a work. You know, you don't need to fear the Lord. Just believe in receive. Luke 16, 15. Uh, let's read 14 and 15. And the Pharisees also, Pharisees, which put tradition, man, eh? Above scripture. Okay. And the Pharisees also who were covetous. They want that. They want the world. They want all the riches. Their glory and the big, the, all the subscribers and all that stuff, right? And the Pharisees also who were covetous heard all these things and they derided him. And he said unto them, Ye are they which justify yourselves before men. But God knoweth your hearts. For that which is highly esteemed among men is an abomination in the sight of God. How can ye believe? Ye which receive honor one of another and seeketh not the honor that cometh from God only. You are not honoring the God who is with your profanity. Well, Brad, you, yes, I have. But you know what the difference is? I have the Father in me. You guys don't. I am convicted and feel horrible after I have done such atrocity. You don't, but rather on the mill to justify it. Isaiah 22. I, Isaiah 22. Here, here's a good verse that describes this theology of free grace. Okay, Like I said, it is not its own denomination. I, I kind of feel that they're trying to, I think they're trying to establish it as such. But, I mean, when you, you talk to people, it's in Methodism, it's in Episcopalianism, uh, uh, Presbyterianism, okay? It's all, it's a, it's a disease. It's a cancer. But in um, Isaiah 22, okay? Isaiah 22, verses 12 on verse 14. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
And in that day did the Lord God of hosts call to weeping and mourning and to baldness and girding with sackcloth. You know, repentance. But hey, repenting to them is a work. Okay? And this is under the law too. Keep that in mind. This is instruction in righteousness. And behold, joy and gladness, slaying oxen and killing sheep, eating flesh, drinking wine. Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we shall die. That's the mindset of the free gracer. Don't worry about it. The more sin you do, the better it is. We're not under the law. We're under grace. We're not even bound by the morality, the morality of the law. The morality even of the law. Because they're their own God. They, they save themselves. So live it up, boy. Smoke them cigarettes there, bloke. Uh, drink your beer. All you keep on by wishing people dead, cursing like that, you know? Even people who I consider my enemies, it's like, you know, dude, I, 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 the bloke, his mother died. It's like, you know, I didn't contact him because he records everything, but it's like, you know, I'm, you know, I even said that publicly in a video, I think. It's like, I, I heard that you, you lost your mother. I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry your mother died. I understand you hated her, but I, I understand. I, I lost my mother and I, I'm sorry that you lost your mother. This guy that I'm mentioning, I'm not naming his name, um, you know, was like glad that people were dead. It was horrific. And yet, he's a representative of Christ. Just believe and receive. Let us eat and drink for tomorrow we die. It doesn't matter. Live it up. You save yourself by your own belief. And it was revealed in my ears by the Lord of hosts. Surely this iniquity shall not be purged from you till ye die, saith the Lord of hosts. Now that holds two ways. There are unfortunately with saints certain little pet sins that some of us have. You see this? Okay. Okay. I don't know if I'm ever going to be able to give up sugar. But, okay. But, you know, there are, bre there are brethren who smoke. There are brethren who drink. Okay. There are brethren who do other things. Okay. That holds twofold. Okay. This iniquity... Uh, this iniquity shall not be purged from you till you die. For the saint, that scares the hell out of us. But see, for the antinomianist, hey, live it up. For that a reason. Eat and drink for tomorrow we shall die. That's why some of these people, you know, might die suddenly as God's judgment. Okay? Okay? And now, Jeremiah 6. Jeremiah 6, 13... On to verse 15. You know, the, shoe, the shoe of their countenance testifieth to their, of, of the, you know. <laughs> they let loose on all this profanity. No repentance, but rather justification. And then they make the conscious decision to upload it and to share it. Hence, giving you who sees that the impression that God's okay with it. He's not. Their God, you know, the one God in three persons, the ecumenical pond scum that it is. But the God who is, is abhorred, uh, abhors that. And they are, and the true God is abhorred by the free gracer. They're all Trinitarians. You, I have not met one that isn't. But Jeremiah 6, 13 out of 15. For from the least of them, even unto the greatest of them. Everyone is given to, given to covetousness. And a holy place there goes Psalm 10. You know. And also to Pentecostals, you know, with the name it and blame it. You know, metaphysical mind science, which is basically easy believism anyway. Uh, uh, Psalm 10, verse 3. For the wicked boasteth of his heart's desire and blesseth the covetous whom the Lord abhorreth. Go back to uh, Jeremiah 6. For, verse 13. For the least of them, for, for, from the least of them, even unto the greatest of them, everyone is given to covetousness. And from the prophet, even unto the priest, everyone dealeth falsely. They have healed also the hurt of the daughter of my people, saying, uh, people slightly saying, peace, peace, when there is no peace. See, the peace these guys offer you is peace, with your sin. 
evident with their use of profanity. And the freedom that they offer you is freedom from the God who is. But uh, to be yoked onto a God who has no requirements, who is okay with you being, acting like a devil regularly, and that uh, call prayer a work, uh, repentance a work, calling on the name of the Lord a work, they offer you another Jesus, another gospel. They say peace, and the peace they offer you is peace with sin. And the freedom they offer you is freedom from, from God. The grace of free grace is not the grace of God. It is the grace of the devil. And his grace says, go for it. Were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? Now, some of these guys will be like, okay, I've been exposed. I better cover my tracks. But see, they do that to save face for the facade. They don't do it out of a genuine heart. And you watch. These people will leave these things up without care. God knows my heart. Only a lost person says that. Yes, God does know your heart. Oh, yeah. Oh, we've talked about that in many a length. Yes, God does know your heart. And he who trusteth in his own heart is a fool. And when they say that God knows my heart, they're proclaiming themselves a fool. And the fool says in his heart, there is no God except themselves. Nay, they were not at all ashamed, neither could they blush. Therefore they shall fall among them that fall. At the time that I visit them, they shall be cast down, said the Lord. No shame. No shame. Like I said, the one guy who apparently is now, who, who I'm referring to, who just went off on this tirade, apparently for now, these guys will quit for a while and then come back. But um, for now, he's like done with it, apparently. But... Um, and see, their shame is in that they got caught, not in the fact that they did it. And that's the thing of the separation between the Christian and the saint. These guys, they're ashamed that they got caught. They're not ashamed that they actually did the offense. Matthew 7. Matthew 7, verses 15 on to verse 20. Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Uh, no nowadays, I mean, these, this is actually nowadays the more refined. Uh, some of these guys like that guy, uh, Praise He Ain't, and all those people um, collected around that guy, that they... they they sure their countenance testify against them. They, they, they can't even blush. They have no shame. They, they, I mean, they, they're obvious. These are talking, about, you know, a little bit more refined people, like Jesuit James White, like Kent Hovind, like some other people that I'm not going to mention. Okay? Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Thorns, thistles, briars of the world. Of the world. Every, even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but every corrupt tree bringeth forth corrupt. Uh, uh, but every corrupt, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. Excuse me. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. And you look at free grace and how it's infected this joke of Christianity to begin with. And there's none good but God, or one, and that's God. And they don't even have the right God. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. And Matthew 12, 33 and 35 Either make the tree good and his fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt and his fruit corrupt. For the tree is known by his fruit. Hold your place and go to Revelation chapter 3. 
<laughs> and remember, <laughs> you're wrong if you think Revelation is chronological. <laughs> oh, oh, this is disgusting. Oh, oh, let me see. Revelation 3. <laughs> Verses 15. Oh, verse 15, uh, 15 on to verse 16. Laodicea. Revelation 3, 15 and 16. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. Gray area. Either or. There is no option C. Either make the tree good and his fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt and his fruit corrupt. For the tree is known by his fruit. Either or, people, there is no gray area. There is no option C. Example, there's no purgatory. Okay, that's, a, that's Catholic. That option C, gray area. Yea, hath God said. Okay? Revelation 3, 16. So then, because thou art lukewarm, gray, option C, neither or and that one, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Translation, he'll puke. You make God sick. You make him vomit. Example, I'm going to name this guy. Dade Murphy, an atheist, uh, a crazy atheist, has publicly stated that, yeah, he doesn't want God. He chose. He made his decision. He's with the devil. He's made his choice. He's cold. I, you saints, we're hot. Okay? We have made our choice. A lot of these free gracer guys... And a lot of these coadjutors have already made their choice serving the Vatican, but they want to give off unto you gray. Back in Matthew 12, O generation of vipers, and viper is a serpent. Oh, that old serpent, the devil, Satan. How can ye being evil speak good things? Some of them can speak good things, but see, there's none good but God. Okay? So how can they, being evil, truly speak good things when they offer you another Jesus, another gospel? For out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh. And see, when these guys justify themselves, make excuses. God knows your heart. Yeah, you're lost. Yeah. Yeah, they're, look, you're lost. Just like the ones that you're attacking, too. They're, they're all lost. You're all lost. Not all of you who see this, I'm not saying that. I'm saying about this genre, this little semi-whatever, quasi Denom whatever, not denomination, this genre of Christianity which involves these free grace antinomianist guys who justify sin and swear and all this. They're their own little subcategory. Okay? They're all lost. Yeah. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth good things. And that's a reference on the hidden man of the heart. Who's the men, hidden man of the heart? That ought to be the Lord Jesus Christ. But see, there's no room in the heart of these antinomianists and these coadjutors for the Lord. And that's, I already wrote, uh, wrote that. No room for two. Okay? No room for two. Hmm. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things. An evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. Second Peter 2. Second Peter 2. 17. On, and yet we've covered these before, but it's like 
that video that that I listened to yesterday, it's like, wow, wow. Listen to me. Unless a miracle happened, there's no reconciling with that. Be careful. Be careful. Because they will do the wounded duck syndrome. They've been caught. And it's like, okay, I've been caught, so I'm going to make like the wounded duck and try to press themselves upon your sensibilities because they know that you have a soft heart and that you're willing to forgive. And they bank on that and they worm right in as they always do and then they turn and bite you again. Wake up. Wake up. Second Peter seventeen, uh, excuse me. Second Peter two seventeen to the close. These are wells without water, clouds that are carried with the tempest, full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. To whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever, for when they speak great swelling words of vanity. Hold your place. Colossians two. <laughs> For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of Catholics. Oh, excuse me. After the traditions, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. A little doesn't hurt. Got to make a living, right? You're being too extreme. Right. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lust of the flesh. You can have your cake and eat it too. Just believe and receive. Through much wantonness, those that were clean escape from them who live in error. Well, they promised them liberty. And they do. Liberty from who? God. They themselves are the servants of corruption. For whom a man is overcome of the same as he brought into bondage. Where do you go now, brother? Romans 6.16 Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness? John chapter, what is that, 8? John chapter 8. Oh, John chapter 5. Wait, 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 where is that? Where is that? Where am I? What am I thinking of? That not sick. John chapter 8, verse 44. Ye are of your father the devil, for he grace her. And the lust of your father ye will do. Ye will be like the most high. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth. Because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a liar and the father of it. While they promised them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption. For of whom a man is overcome, of the same he is brought in bondage. For after they have escaped the pollutions of this world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled there, therein and overcome. The latter end is worse with them than the beginning. Now there are those out there who are deceiving and being deceived, but like these coadjutors, like the bloke and like the Canadian talk show host, like Elmer from New York, okay? There are these guys who know very well what the actual truth is, but they preach contrary to it. They give examples contrary to the truth. They know what the truth is, but they reject it. They've made their choice. They're serving the Vatican and the devil. Therefore, their end is worse there than, their, than their beginning. For it had been better for them to not have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it and turned from the holy commandment delivered on to them. But, hey, let us eat and drink for tomorrow we die. 
I have a reason. I can uh, justify and excuse anything. But it has happened unto them according to the true proverb. The dog <laughs> is turned to his own vomit again. Dog is male. And the sow that was washed to her, sow is female, wallowing in the mire. Second Corinthians ten. Second Corinthians ten. You know, you, you people who may see this, um, you, you you gotta watch out for these guys who just say believe and receive. Um, there, there are many telltale signs. If you see someone claiming to be a Christian and they have no problem with uh, profanity, they're not a saint. Okay, they're not saved. Watch out for these guys, and also to. When you hear these guys tell you that it's by grace, through faith, from beginning to end, they're lying to you. It is easily provable that it was not by grace, through faith, in the Garden of Eden. It is easily provable that it is not by grace, through faith, in the time of Jacob's trouble. It is very easily provable that it is not grace, through faith, during the kingdom of heaven. But these guys tell you it's by grace through faith from beginning to end. Anyone tells you that, they're a servant of the Vatican, they are lost, get away from them. Now I, Paul, myself beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, who in presence am base among you, but being absent and bold toward you. But I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present with that confidence, wherein I think to be bold against some, which think, uh, think of us as if we walked according to the flesh. And the antinomianist does exactly that. The free gracer. They walk according to the flesh. So does the Catholic. Which, free grace, is just a daughter of the whore anyway. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not, are not carnal. Carnal means fleshly. Carnival fleshly amusement, okay? But mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations of every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God. Casting down imaginations. And there are wicked imaginations. You're, you, you're, you save yourself by your own belief. You are your own God. You are your own salvation. Your faith is in your faith. Okay? And bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. And having in readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. That's what's lacking in this guy, these guys. What vehement desire, what revenge when I dropped the couch on my toe. I was more hurt that my father heard me and people also heard me because I represent the true God. I wept. Lord, forgive me for saying that. I'm sorry. These guys. Hey, we're not under the law, but under grace. Uh, yeah, the more the more uh, sin I do, the more grace abounds. Let us eat and drink, and tomorrow we die. Yeah. Do ye look on things after the outward appearance? If any man trust himself that he is Christ's, let him think. Let himself think this again. That as he is Christ, even so are we Christ. For though I should boast somewhat more of our authority, which the Lord hath given us for edification, and not for your destruction, I should not be ashamed. But see, you got guys who all they do is attack people. Yeah. When even devils themselves point out, all these videos, but not one thing of gospel. Yeah. That I might not seem as I, if I would terrify you by letters. For his letters say they are weighty and powerful, but his bodily presence is weak and his speech contemptible. That's the guy who wrote that to us? He don't look like much. Oh. But see, when it comes to putting the rubber to the road, Walking what he talked. That's our Apostle Paul. 
Let such an one think this, that, such as we are in word by letters when we are absent, such will we be also indeed when we are present. Say and do, walk your talk. So many of these guys talk a good game, but when the rubber hits the road, they don't walk their talk. Who you see is who you're going to meet. With majority of these Christians, I doubt the person you see on their videos is hardly the person you're going to meet. For we, and right here, for we dare not make ourselves of the number or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves. But they measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves are not wise. Like it talks in Romans 2, two lost people condemning themselves because they are... It's like the free gracer guys! They condemn and they point at each other and condemn each other. They're all lost! See, the balance that they are weighing themselves on is false to begin with. They don't have the right God. And the God that they serve is themselves. And when you are your own standard and you serve yourself, you are for your father the devil, dude. It's just that, it's just that simple. 1 Corinthians 4. 1 Corinthians 4, 18 on to 20. Okay? 1 Corinthians 4, 18 on to 20. Now, some are puffed up, so I would not come to you. But I will come to you shortly, if the Lord will, and will know not the speech of them which are puffed up, but the power. Power of a new creature. Power of a life that changes because you are made a new creature. As Paul says in 1 Corinthians 2, 1 and 2. And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Crucified unto the world. I am dead unto the world. I am crucified with Christ. Instead of... Quoting that off uh, uh, out of my mind, uh, Galatians 2. Galatians 2. Come on. Galatians 2. Okay? Verses 20 on to 21. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. Christ doesn't live within the antinomianists. Okay? Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. In the life which I now live, I live in the flesh. Uh, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. And then you go to Colossians chapter 1, verse 27. <laughs> uh, verse 27 on the verse 29. To whom God would make known what is... What is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. You know, the Holy Ghost, the Lord is that Spirit, God the Father, okay, whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom, fear of the Lord, that we may present every man perfect in heart in, in Christ Jesus, whereunto I also labor, striving according to his working which worketh, which worketh in me mightily. The power, Christ in you, the hope of glory, a new creature. The power is not of us, it's of the Lord. We have no power with God, but we have that power, the Father himself dwelling within us. That's what these guys don't have. They have a power of their own will where they do these fleshly things. Like the alcoholic who can have a changed life because of his own willpower. But see, the saint 
has a changed life because he is a new creature. Watch out for guys who preach the changed life gospel without mentioning being made a new creature. Watch out for that. <clears throat> but I will come to you back in 1 Corinthians 4, but I will come to you shortly, if the Lord will, and will know the, not the speech of them which are puffed up, but the power. For the kingdom of God is not in word, but power. What is that power? Christ in you, the hope of glory. Not that you're a little God, but that He is everything because He is in you. Okay? I said, I like, What will ye? Shall I come unto you with a rod or in love and in the spirit of meekness? 2 Corinthians 4, verses 1 out of verse 5. But see, as it talks about in uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, know this also that I, instead of misquoting that just very quickly, just going to glance at that. In uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. Without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. Therefore, seeing we have, uh, 2 Corinthians 4, 1 and 5, therefore seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, like the antinomianist does, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Look at that. A manifestation of the truth. Okay? How you serve the Lord reflects Him. And it matters. Because you're claiming to be a servant of the Most High God, and yet these guys are profanity, unrestrained. They're not representatives of the true God. But see, they're making you believe that they are. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world, that's Lucifer, Satan, okay, hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves, your servants, for Jesus' sake. Uh, very quickly, John 3. John 3. Hmm. Verses uh, 19 on to 21. And this is the condemnation, that light has come into the world. And men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For every one that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deed should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought, wrought in God. Ephesians chapter 4. We're almost done. Ephesians chapter 4. Verses 29 under 32. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. Corrupt communication. Your words, but also your body language. Okay? This includes profanity, but corrupt communication, another Jesus and another gospel. But this also includes profanity. But that which is to the use of edifying that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And that guy who was just, oh, profanity upon profanity upon profanity. Yeah, see, the grace that free grace offers you 
is not the grace of God, people. It's not. God's grace doesn't excuse you to speak in profanity. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. If these guys were saved, they're not. But if they were, they're grieving the Holy Spirit of God. And the peaceable fruits of righteousness that come from chastisement, where is it? You can't see the chastisement that happens. Sometimes you can. And when you see actual chastisement, that's the one it's like, oh, bro brothers, I'm so, uh, I'm going to, I'm, pr oh, oh. But usually you don't see it. But what you can see is the peaceable fruits of righteousness that come after it. That's how you can judge chastisement in a saint. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Not justify it or excuse it. Well, I just believe uh, by grace am I saved. So I have a, a license to sin and say these things. And the more I sin, the more grace abounds onto me. We're not under the law, but under grace. No. Those guys are twisting the truth. They're, they're making the truth a lie. And be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. And not everyone is forgiven. You got to go the way of the cross. And the Lord can forgive you. Yes. But see that verse 32 is talking about who are forgiven. Saints. But see. The free grace people. 1 John 4. 1 John 4. 1 John 4. Verse 5, they are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. And 1 John 2, 15 on to 20, this is what the free gracer offers you, a license to sin, to have your cake and eat it too. They offer you gray area. They don't offer you the true Jesus or the true gospel. They're servants of the Vatican. They're preaching Roman Catholic ecumenicalism. Because, the, like I told you, like I demonstrated to you like we showed you the bridge that is going to link all faith together after we are gone. Anyone can believe. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. And that's what they give you, the love of the world. Don't worry about it. Let us eat and drink. For tomorrow we'll die. Yeah. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Little children, it is the last time. And as ye have heard, that Antichrist shall come. And now are there many antichrists to be against and to replace is what anti means. Whereby we know it is the last time, that it is the last time. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would now no doubt have continued with us. But they want their cake and eat it too. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. Meaning, you have the Father within you, saint, who knows all things. You don't know all things. You know Him who knows all things. Philippians chapter 4, verses 8. On to verse 9. 
Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, lovely and your, 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 your speech is laced with profanity, Whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report. And there is none good but God. And these guys are giving you the impression that God's okay with it. Wake up. Pull your head up. Wake up. If there, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, Think on these things. Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do. And the God of peace shall be with you. This is Paul walking around justifying filthy language? Huh? Huh? And see, these guys praise their God, Satan, for the freedom from God to be like the world and have their cake and eat it too. Dear, 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 dear people. Dear people. Look. Easy believism is an ecumenical Roman Catholic doctrine. In my opinion, it is the most dangerous heresy that we are facing as saints today. It needs to be exposed. It needs to be eradicated. But unfortunately, this is their hour in the power of darkness. And it's growing. There are people that I have seen that are speaking out against it. But these people, you know, you're not using the scriptures. Uh, I, um, the one bloke is trying to poison some kid uh, that I've seen. And I saw that. And he's going after easy believism. But not even using the scriptures. And it's like... <laughs> but there are those out there who are coming out against... Easy believism. People, believe and receive is not the truth. The grace that these guys offer you is not the grace of God, but it is of their little G-God, Satan, who gives you freedom from God and a license to sin. It's time for you to wake up. Come. Let's reason together, you and I. Please consider these things, dude. Please. That's going to be it for this video. Thank you for watching this. If you do, I love you. And Lord willing, see you in the next video. Please keep your servant in prayer. Um, please keep your servant in prayer. Um, don't know how much time i got left. There's a lot to do. But I truly believe once, you know, I'm out of here, you know, um, I, I know that there's uh, people who will come to the forefront. People will come to the forefront, not because of the behest of me, but sooner or later they will. So, anyway, that's going to be it. Going to uh, start it at 11.30 and it's now uh, almost 1.30. Almost 1.30. Bye-bye.